Unity 2019.3 was released just over a week ago, on January 27th, 2020. It's the first official release to drop since 2019.2, which came out last July, and it has a ton of great new features. Among the most exciting are verified packages for the high definition render pipeline and visual effect graph, a new quick search feature, and a modern redesign of the editor UI called Northstar. On top of that, there are many additions that are going to provide a lot of value to the game dev community as a whole. But what I'm interested in is what's new for us coders. So in this video, I'll be sharing some of my favorite Unity 2019.3 features that were made specifically for programmers. But first, my name is Charles and this is Infallible Code, a channel designed to help you become a better game developer. If you'd like to learn more about Unity, programming, and game development, then be sure to subscribe to this channel. And don't forget to hit that bell icon. If you've been following this channel for a while, then you may know that I spent quite a bit of time covering Unity ECS back in 2018. And then I just stopped. That's because at the time, Unity ECS was very young and it had a long way to go before it would ever be considered production ready. Well, some time has passed and I think it's safe to say that it's grown up. In fact, it even has a new name. Now known as DOTS, which is an acronym for Data Oriented Text Stack, Unity has added a bunch of features that makes it way easier to get performance by default. Before Unity 2019.3, optimizing your code meant creating a component, manually exposing it in the editor, creating a system, implementing a job, and then scheduling that job in the aforementioned system. Now, if you're like me and have a background in Java, you might be used to boilerplate code like this, but most game devs probably look at this mess and promptly close their editor. And I don't blame them. Well, now they don't have to, because Unity Dots is becoming much simpler to use. First, the new generate authoring component attribute removes the need to create an entire class just to expose your components in the editor. Just slap it onto your component struct and the compiler will take care of the rest. Second, the new for each method that's exposed on the entities class encapsulates all of the job code into a simple Lambda function. Now, I know what you might be thinking, Lambdas cause GC allocations and spikes, right? But don't fret, because these Lambdas are actually compiled into structs. You still get all of the optimization of dots, which also happens to now take advantage of the burst compiler. Before these changes, Unity Dots was complicated required a lot of extra code, and was completely inaccessible to developers. But Unity 2019.3 has shown a huge step in the right direction, and I'm excited to see where it goes, and to start covering Unity ECS on this channel again as the data-oriented technology stack that can provide your project's performance by default. When you write a class, you should generally know what it's responsible for and how it should do its job. For example, a player class should keep track of the player's health, and it should do that by modifying some internal value in response to healing and damage. This makes writing code predictable, because when you reference instances of a class that you've written, say, your game manager is responsible for calling dot .heal and dot .damage on the player, you can be confident of the result. But this isn't always the case. Sometimes it isn't obvious how a class or its subclasses should carry out a responsibility, and you don't know what it'll do when you call on it. Take items in an inventory, for example. Each one should be responsible for handling what happens when the player uses them. A health potion should heal the player, and a sword should be equipped. But the inventory doesn't know this. It just knows to call .use on whichever item the player selects. This is enabled by a programming concept called polymorphism. Now, if you already know what this is, bear with me. But polymorphism is a feature in object-oriented programming languages that gives an object the ability to take on many forms. In our inventory example, each specific item class would derive from an interface that defines what an item can do. We call that the object's contract, and in the case of an item, it would include the use method. This allows the inventory class to reference a list of generic items without having to know what they are and what they'll do when they're used, which is incredibly powerful. Now, here's the kicker. Before 2019.3, Unity could not serialize polymorphic data or even plain old C-sharp objects, POCOs for that matter, which means that any such references within your model behaviors would not be saved. 
Now, there are a few solutions such as scriptable objects that have allowed us programmers to work around this limitation. But with Unity 2019.3, we finally have official support for this functionality in the way of a new attribute called serialized reference. When you add the serialized reference attribute to a POCO field, whether it's an interface or not, Unity will now know how to save it in between scene runs. This opens the door to more complex internal structures such as graphs and generic lists that'll really elevate model behaviors to the next level, all without the overhead of having to create and track a ton of scriptable objects. The profiler is one aspect of Unity that doesn't seem to get a lot of love, but I really do appreciate the team that works on it because it truly is an invaluable tool, one that got a few upgrades in 2019.3. Now, if you're thinking, no one cares about the profiler, don't click away just yet. There might just be a feature in here that you actually care about. The first one is configurable frame counts. Before, you'd have to pay close attention and be quick to pause your scene if you were trying to find something specific in the profiler, because it only used to hold 300 frames at a time. Now, it might sound like a lot, but at 60 frames per second, you're only looking at five seconds worth of data. In Unity 2019.3, however, you can head on over to Edit, Preferences, then Analysis and Profiler to adjust the frame range to up to 2,000 frames. Just be sure to use this with caution because all those frames come with a lot of overhead and memory usage that adds up quickly and can easily bog down your computer. Next up is deep profiling support for players. The CPU usage section of the profiler reveals how much of each frame the execution of your code takes up. It does this using profile markers that are sprinkled throughout Unity's native code. If you want to profile your own code, you can do that using profile markers as well. But to be honest, I don't like adding calls like this to my logic because it tends to muddle the intent of my code. Instead, I'd prefer to turn on deep profiling, which enables recording of all code regardless of the presence of profile markers. Now, you probably guessed that this isn't very efficient, and you'd be right. So deep profiling is preserved specifically for development. In fact, before 2019.3, deep profiling was only available inside of the editor. But now you can enable deep profiling inside of actual builds, which is incredibly valuable. Being able to see your code run on specific devices will enable you to make very specific optimizations so your games can run better on a wider variety of players. But again, be sure to use this with caution. You never want to enable deep profiling in a production build. Last up is managed allocation tracking. I touched on garbage collection in my video on exception handling, but in a nutshell, GC allocation is the process of freeing up unused memory, and it can lead to major slowdown in your frame rates if left unchecked. You manage this by hunting down and removing any code that allocates a lot of garbage. That's where managed allocation tracking comes in. Let's say you got an update method that handles an exception that's thrown every single frame. That's a lot of garbage allocation. You'd be able to find this in the profiler by first enabling call stacks, running your scene, selecting a frame, and ordering the hierarchy view of the CPU usage section by GC Alex. Then you simply move down the list until you find the GC.alloc object and with show related objects on, select the item with the highest GC Alloc value. From there, you'll be able to look at the call stack and see the exact line that's creating all of the garbage. It's not the friendliest approach, but it's pretty straightforward and way better than nothing. So those are my favorite programming features in Unity 2019.3. I'm sure there were a few others that I missed, so feel free to drop those in the comment. And if you'd like to discuss this even further, be sure to join our community of game developers on the Infallible Code Discord server. I'm really excited about the direction that Unity's been heading, and this latest version shows that they're really invested in bringing preview features like dots, the new input system, and Unity netcode to the next level. I can't wait to see what that looks like. Well, as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Special shout out to my top supporters, Berkwist 3D, Darkwish Photography, Thomas, and Trond.